Hello YouTube and YouTubeettes. Welcome to an album review. I have a very special formula that I use to make grades, so you will hear fractions and <laughs> like a 5.73 or whatever. I'm, I won't give that away, but in this video, I'm going to review the Orange Glow album by Globe Lamp. This came out originally on October 27, 2015 on Psychedelic Thrift Store Recordings on cassette. I like the name of that. And then the other one later in 2016 was released on Wichita Recordings. This is produced by Elizabeth LaFay, who's the main artist and composer of these songs and singer, as well as Joel Jerome. This artist is described on Wikipedia as anywhere from fawn-like innocence to savage snarls of men cannot be trusted. <laughs> I just recently heard about Globe Lamp, just really just a week or two ago. I've been reviewing a few albums and somebody commented on my Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys album review and said, check out Globe Lamp. So I did and I was blown away by this music. I thought it was really good. Although they uh, requested me to uh, review the album Stardust, I checked uh, some of the albums, and the one that stuck out to me the most was actually the Orange Glow. So hopefully they don't get too upset that I, whoever commented, that I <clears throat> am reviewing the wrong album. <laughs> but maybe later I'll, I'll do Stardust as well. I kind of see this as artsy folk music. The cover is an orange shade of Elizabeth on a filter, some sort of filter. I'm not good at knowing what those filters are called. It's simple yet interesting, and I give the cover an 8 out of 10. Now on to the songs. The first song on the album is Washington Moon, and it says that uh, in Wikipedia it didn't specify who wrote what. It lists Elizabeth uh, Leigh Lefay as a composer, as well as Maya Hizamoto, so I'm not sure which songs Maya helps on, if not all of them, but uh, I assume Elizabeth <coughs> wrote most of the songs. This song starts out as kind of like a 90s style rock song. It kind of sounds familiar, but it's just a little off in a good way. And so it makes it more interesting. And then all of a sudden the time signature changes and it gets into more of this folky kind of thing. And uh, it's a really interesting song. It's a little lower on the catchiness side, but it's a more artistic song. And I give this one a 7.8 out of 10. I'm not the second song is called Controversial Confrontational. And this one has, is a little bit more, or at least basic sounding than the first, but it's still got interesting twists, I should say, in it with the vocals. My favorite part is when it switches up, I guess, to the chorus, the backing vocal is going kind of sliding up and down, which is very interesting. So this one's a little catchier than the first, but just as artistic, and I give this one an 8.0 out of 10. The next song is called The Negative, and I really love the sound at the beginning of this song. It sounds like a, an accordion with a piano, and whatever else is being played here, but it's it's a very beautiful uh, beginning. And then it gets into this really haunting melody <laughs> and followed by some interesting piano parts. And then the melody just kind of meanders around in unexpected places. So it, it does, it's very creative and interesting. Th there's a part of it, this song actually reminds me of a group called Bodies of Water, so if you've ever heard of them, the style of, it's kind of like that, but a little bit more strange. <laughs> so check them out. But I give this song an 8.0 out of 10. Oh, 
The next song is called Moon Proof, which uh, starts out with a beautiful violin sound and then this haunting melody line that sounds normal at first and once again goes into some very interesting places. It almost sounds strenuous, but that's part of the creativity. And then it gets into this beautiful two-part harmony. I really dig this song. It, once again, because it's so strange, it's a little lower on catchiness side, but high on the artistic side. And I give this song an 8.2 out of 10. The fifth song on the album is Artist Traveler. And this has a bit more of a accessible melody and basic sound, uh, kind of a folk sound, but it's still very beautiful and interesting in a very, in a bit more of a normal way for this album so far. So it does higher on the catchiness side. And uh, it's still very strong artistically as well. I give this one an 8.2 out of 10. The next song is called Don't Go Walking in the Woods Alone at Night. <laughs> I like that title. This one's also kind of a haunting melody, but more of a basic folk style. It kind of reminds me of like a 60s folk song, maybe something Joan Baez-ish. It's a very beautiful song, and it just has enough interesting parts to it. And I like the way her voice, so her voice starts out kind of hushed, and then, it, and then it picks up and she's full voice later in the song. And then some interesting vocals that she does ending the song. So a very nice song, one of the stronger songs on the album, and I give it an 8.6 out of 10. Track number seven is the title track, The Orange Glow. And this one starts out with some very beautiful guitar and piano and another basic, more basic folk style song, but still she keeps it very interesting throughout. Very interesting melody line. And then it gets into this very beautiful stuff later in the song. But this is a very good song and I give it an 8.2 out of 10. Cold calculations I The next song is called Invisible Prisms. And this one is, once again, kind of a strange melody, a little haunting, and probably one of my lesser favorite, lesser songs on the album. It, kind of doesn't go anywhere for a while, but she does add enough interesting things to it to keep it, keep me into it. And especially towards the end, she does some interesting things. But I really love the way she, she's done this in several songs. She slides her vocals a lot, which is kind of a unique vocal style. So I give this song a 7.8 out of 10. The next song is called Master of Lonely, which is about me. Uh, just kidding. Anyway, this is a haunting, another hauntingly beautiful song. It kind of goes along and then it speeds up a little bit. I kind of like how she sings, she doubles on the voice an octave higher, and her high voice is really cool. So it's one of these songs that kind of drags along but there's enough interesting things in it to keep pulled in and it's a little catchier than a lot of the other songs so i give it an 8.2 out of 10. the next song is piece of the pie and this one uh, is a bit heavier uh, than most of them Reminds me somewhat of Frankie Rose and the Outs, but it's very, very catchy, and then it kind of slows down to this eerie kind of a thing, and then it goes back up, beat again. 
And then it just goes in different places, interesting places towards the end. This is one of the stronger songs on the album, and I give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The next song is called San Francisco. And this one has a very beautiful piano part at the beginning and once again gets into this haunting melody and a little bit off in a good way again off when i say off i mean like weird and uh the the rhythm sort of shifts as it goes a bit so when i was listening to this again just now it reminded me a bit another group that I think about is the Velvet Underground, especially when they had Nico singing the female voice on kind of this odd folk music that is a little off. And so that kind of gave me the sense of the Velvet Underground a bit. So <clears throat> check them out. This is a very strong song once again, and I give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The last song on the album is Fairy Queen. I guess that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled kind of odd. Maybe that's a different language. Fairy Queen or something. This is uh, beautiful and it goes into interesting places and it's the best song on the album. I feel like uh, this album generally gets better as it goes along slightly because it starts out strong but it does have some very good songs late in the album. And this is a very nice song. And I give this one a 9.0 out of 10. The flow of the album as the songs go from one to the other and throughout is a 10 out of 10. Musically, this all fits together very well and it has a very similar emotion to it and hauntingness and weirdness and interesting uh, folk kind of music throughout. So a 10 out of 10 for the flow of the album. So once again, this is a very unique artist and I, I'm i very new to this, so I'm gonna listen more to it and maybe it'll grow even more on me. So this is a, a great album and I really recommend Globe Lamp. So now I will pull out my handy dandy computer and calculate my formula. And this album gets an 8.40 out of 10. Thank you and have a wonderful day.